Josh, is the tool you are gonna show me in this video extremely useful? No. Josh, is the tool you're gonna show me in this video fundamentally going to change the performance of my React apps and make my users happy because now my site is so fast? Well, no, hell no. I'm not gonna overpromise anything here, dude, but it's easily one of the most creative uses of a super nice React API that I have ever seen. So just imagine this, you just published your website. Damn, that feels good. Finally, the work is done. Users are able to see your website on the internet, but then, Well, damn, seems like you somehow messed up the performance once again. So what do you do? Option A, you spam, use memo everywhere and hope that fixes things. Option B, you do the exact same with use callback and hope that fixes things. Or option three, you use the tool that I'm going to show you right now. And turns out a lot of people already do. Okay, dude, so React Geiger is a tool for audioizing React performance issues. You can have it running in the background and it makes little clicks, which will point your attention to excessive slow component re-renders. And as I mentioned, it's been getting pretty popular and the setup is incredibly easy. Let me show you how to do this. We import from the MPN package and then literally wrap or app inside of the Geiger component. Now that's it. We can still pass a custom render time threshold though. So for example, let's set this to zero so it'll be very easy to tell how the re-renders behave in our app so i'm gonna do this for you okay i'm gonna hover over this thing and this is gonna be really loud i'm gonna probably tone it down in the video let me just show you how this works when we hover oh, oh god this is so loud when, <laughs> when we hover over this it's gonna start playing a very loud very annoying noise like a geiger counter oh god dude um so we can tell how the component re-renders and that it's pretty slow. Now, in reality, of course, you wouldn't set this to zero, right? Zero millisecond render time is pretty solid. Normally like 50, maybe 25 if you're very performance oriented, I guess. And the thing is, this is not the first time something like this is being put into the world. There was some other people that did something similar. There is a Geiger malloc implementation, whatever that means, to discussed here previously. So it's not the first time somebody came up with this idea, but I do think this is the first time anyone really uses a package like this. But what's much more interesting is how this actually works under the hood. So I did some digging for us to see how this works and it's actually really straightforward. So it builds on top of a native React API that we all get access to, we all can use already in our app, which is the profiler. Now this profiler, if you're wondering where this comes from this literally comes and i can zoom in so you can see this a bit easier this literally comes straight from react at the very top right here the profiler so this is a native react api and it takes an on render function and whenever your app renders and you wrapped your entire app inside of it or a specific component if that's what you want a performance test then this on render that is passed in will actually give you access right here in the handle render to the duration it took for this specific render for the component to occur. And all we're changing by passing in this custom render time threshold right here is when the audio should start playing, when it should start alerting us of our radioactively bad React components right here. So if the actual time it took for this component to render is larger than the threshold like 25 milliseconds that we set, in that case, either if you defined a custom MP3 file that should be played, which you can totally do. Now, if it's good idea you know i'm not gonna be the judge but you can um but in most cases you're gonna be fine with the actual geiger sound that's already annoying enough let's be real here and then it's just gonna play that file at a certain amplitude that you can set there's a bunch of other options we can take a look at but they're not too important like the enabled oh okay this one is pretty important like the enabled for example we can set it to true or false please don't use this in production don't never very very bad idea not only because it'll annoy the absolute shit out of your users but also because this actually brings a performance overhead um it says right here in the caveats profiling adds some additional overhead so it is disabled in the production build by default so please don't pass the enabled true right here because that's going to activate it in production. To opt into production profiling, you need to enable a special production build with profiling enabled. Again, very, very bad idea. And there's some other options like, uh, let's take a look at them. Phase option, profiler ID, you rarely want to change this. And then 
most important one, of course, the threshold. If you want to do some serious performance testing, the profiler is actually really useful. So just architecturally, how this kind of looks in our app, we built on top of the very simple profiler. And the only addition that the React Geiger package makes for us is, well, it checks the time it took to render. And if it took above the certain threshold, then it plays the um, mp3 file. That's literally all it does. But dude, this must be one of the most creative uses of the React Profiler I've ever seen. So, you like the tool? You don't like the tool? Uh, I'm not gonna use it. Listen, I'll be real with you here. I'm not gonna use it in my apps. Ain't no way. I always want that noise inside of my headphones, but it's it's a really creative idea and I think we can all appreciate that. So let me know your thoughts down below. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.